Welcome to House Talk, with videos that'll provide maintenance tips unique to Trilogy at Vistancia Homes, with your host, Doug Bowman. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about hot water heaters. We ignore them until they fail, and then it's a panic to get them back. We're going to talk about tankless water heaters, the Bradford White Defender units that were installed in most of our houses originally, and problems that we've seen with those. We'll talk some more about new units and when you, when you need to go get one, what do you ask for, and then some ongoing maintenance. Because there's thousands of videos on YouTube about fixing problems with water heaters, that's not what we're going to be presenting today. Nor does it imply that if you do need some repairs, you shouldn't use a licensed technician to do the work. What this video is about, discussing problems that we've seen in Trilogy homes and improve the efficiency and longevity of your water heater. Chances are, if you still have your original water heater, it's a Bradford White Defender brand. These only had a six-year warranty. They have small orifice drains, so when you try to flush them, not a lot of the debris comes out. The anode rods were made of cheap materials and were made inaccessible. And if your house was built in the 2000s, chances are pretty good that your warranty has been expired for several, several years now. There's two ways to find the warranty and age information about your water heater. First, look on the name tag. If the information isn't there, you can go to the manufacturer's website, look for the warranty page, and put in the serial number of your particular water heater. It'll tell you there when the water heater was made and when the warranty expired. Now let's start off with the worst case scenario. I promise you it'll get better after this. But what do you do if you have a water leak right now? First of all, don't panic. Get up on top, isolate the water supply to the unit on top. That'll stop the water from coming in. Shut off the gas, or if it's an electric heater, turn off the electric. Hook up a garden hose and drain the water out. Be careful, it's going to be hot. And then control the leakage to prevent water damage and any mold that might occur. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably don't even start thinking about homeowner's insurance until it's too late and something's happened. So what would a typical homeowner insurance policy cover for an event like this? First of all, it depends on your coverage, but most likely, a leak from a water heater is going to be considered wear and tear on the unit or corrosion and would most likely not be covered by insurance. But if an accident occurred and something damaged or fell on your water heater and a leak occurred, you'd probably have a better chance of that being covered. Also, any water damage to surrounding structures like plaster or tools or equipment and other belongings like that, that has a better chance of being covered as well. As many people in Trilogy have found out the hard way, cleaning up from a water leak can be pretty overwhelming. Right about then you start thinking about tankless water heaters and getting rid of this tank altogether so it doesn't happen to you again. So let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, tankless water heaters, you'd have to select the brand, do a little research to figure out what brand and what size you might need. You'd have to find a contractor, put some bids out because there's a lot of labor involved. The gas demand is four to five times greater than that of a regular water heater. So you would probably need a new gas line from the meter to the unit installed. You'd also need permits and a pressure test on the gas line before you'd be able to use it. So all in all, while you're without water, if you start the process for a tankless water heater right then and there, you're probably one to two weeks away from actually seeing a drop of hot water. So most people revert back to installing a tank and getting the water back as soon as possible. If you want to do a tankless water heater, it's something you've got to plan well in advance. So if you've had a leak or you just don't feel comfortable managing the risk of a water heater that is almost twice its warranty age, then what do you look for in a new water heater? Well, first of all, look for a longer warranty. 9 to 12 years is not uncommon. Usually they're a little bit thicker and a better enamel coating over the steel. A dedicated anode port that you can access without having to disconnect all the piping is critical to longevity. Getting a magnesium rod is preferred over an aluminum anode rod. Replacing a drain line with a larger 3 quarter inch drain line and a ball valve so that you can flush all the crap out of the bottom of the tank when you go and do a deep flush. Getting a new water heater drain pan to collect water if it does start to leak down below so you don't get mold between the water heater and the stand that it sits on. Getting a new gas line excess flow check valve so that if somebody does yank off the gas line that it'll detect the excess flow and isolate the flow right then and there. 
and also new hot and cold water lines coming in and out of your water heater made of stainless or copper corrugated. I wouldn't use braided because inside the braided is still a rubber hose. I've done a little research on the costs of replacement water heaters. You've got to get a tank, you've got to have somebody install it, accessories like the pan and the cable and the hose, obviously taxes and then a the total. So at the low end, if you got another six year warranty water heater, you know, you're talking about $875. At the high end, if you get a nine or 12 year warranty, a little bit better materials, the labor and the accessories are pretty much the exact same price. So it's really just the tank that's driving the cost along with respective taxes. So at the high end, you're at about $1,275. So that gives you the, the window that you're kind of looking at. So let's spend some time talking about the problems with water heaters. Problems that you can recover from, problems that you can't, and then also problems that you might see with some of the safety systems. So the first one, obviously, is the tank leaks. If you've got a tank leak on your unit and it's not something that's noticeable like a copper joint or something mechanical uh, outside the water heater, if it's coming from the tank, that's pretty much game over. You're getting a new water heater. You don't want to spend time and money trying to recover something that is probably well beyond its warranty. Now moving forward, when you do get a new water heater, there certainly are things that you can do to extend the life of a water heater, not just up to the warranty period, but as long as 20 to 30 years. The minerals and waters want to attack the steel in your tank. That's the bottom line. So a sacrificial anode is something that the manufacturer installs, and the minerals in the water will attack that sacrificial rod before it attacks the steel on your tank. Replacing this anode rod every three to four years will extend the life of your tank almost 20 to 30 years. Even though manufacturers install anode rods in water heaters, they hope that you don't change them because they know you'll be back for a new water heater in a few years. And probably the simplest thing you can do to extend the life of your water heater is a deep flush. This doesn't mean just opening up the valve and letting it run until it's clear. This is actually a process we'll explain later where you drain all the water out and flush it several times to get all the impurities and the minerals out. Now let's talk about some common problems that you can recover from. You don't necessarily need to buy a new water heater for these problems. The first ones where the hot water doesn't last, doesn't even get you through a shower before the cold water starts appearing. You've probably got a broken dip tube. Dip tube is a cheap plastic rod that extends down through the cold inlet and goes almost to the bottom of the tank. It carries the cold water down to the heater. If this tube is to break about halfway down, it will quickly dilute the hot water, making it appear cold. A dip tube is a simple fix. It costs between $20 and $40 for the material, and then the cost of the service call on top of that. The next recoverable problem is a pilot light that won't stay lit. There's a couple solutions for this. The most probable cause is the thermocouple. It's probably out of position or it needs to be replaced. This doesn't require draining the tank and a thermocouple is approximately $20 to $50 plus the cost of a service fee. The thermocouple senses the heat from the pilot light and creates a voltage and that voltage in turn operates a valve to keep the pilot light lit. If the thermocouple's in the wrong position or has failed, it won't generate the voltage and you'll never be able to open the pilot gas valve. The second most probable cause for a pilot light not staying lit is the gas valve that the thermocouple is trying to operate. If it's stuck and it won't move, no matter how much voltage you apply to it, it won't operate and the control unit will have to be replaced. This is a little bit more costly, but you can still get a control unit for about $150 to $200, plus the cost of a service call to get it fixed. This fix will also require draining of the tank. The next recoverable problems involve safety issues and should be investigated by a licensed contractor. The first one is a leaking relief valve. If your relief valve is operated, this is a serious issue. You've probably got a control unit that won't turn off the burner and your water is being heated up excessively. This certainly needs to be investigated. If you have a relief valve that is just dripping a few drops every minute or so, then you just may have dirt in your relief valve and you can operate the relief valve by pulling the spring out and letting go and it should flush out any debris that's in there. Replacing a relief valve is about $20 for the material and the cost of a service call. On newer water heaters, there's a safety button or a safety switch down at the bottom of the water heater. 
It senses the temperature of the burner area below the tank. If you have a burner that won't shut off, or you have a chimney that's plugged, excessive heat can be generated down here, and it'll sense that temperature and shut off the gas. This too is a serious issue and should be investigated by a licensed contractor. The last one is the smell of gas. If you smell gas in and around the water heater, you should shut off the gas if it's safe to do so, then contact a licensed contractor to do troubleshooting, and in case of emergency, obviously dial 911. As I said earlier, the two things that you can do that will extend the life of your water heater is replacing the anode every three to four years, and then also annually doing a deep flush. So here's the instructions to do a flush. First, start by lowering the temperature on the controller to the pilot setting. If you've got a recirculation pump on your water heater, unplug it during the flush. Up on top, shut the cold water valve inlet to stop water from coming in. Connect a garden hose to the drain valve and then fully open the drain valve. Be careful, it's gonna be hot. Go inside the house, open up a hot water faucet and that'll allow air to vent back into the water tank. It's going to take 10 to 15 minutes to drain your water heater, so in the meantime, you can go down and observe what's actually pouring out of your water heater hose. If you've got a water softener, it won't be uncommon for you to see white particulates coming out the hose. This is calcium, and that's pretty normal for water softeners. If you observe a white, soft gelatin, that's probably your anode rod decomposing. If you see any other minerals or deposits coming out of your garden hose, you should probably either look them up online to see what you can find or contact a licensed contractor and they'll be able to help you. Now once the tank is empty, you're going to go back up on top of the water heater and you're going to open up the cold water valve for about 10 seconds. You'll hear water flying in there and agitating the bottom because there's no other water in the water heater. Do this for about 10 seconds and then shut the valve and then let that drain out. Observe the water as it's coming out of the garden hose. Do this again three or four more times to really clean off the bottom and keep repeating it until you don't see any more particulates coming out the hose. Once you get a clean water flow, then you know that you're in good shape and you can go ahead and restore the water heater. All right, so let's review what we've talked about today. If you're thinking about installing a tankless water heater, it's gonna require some planning and some permits and getting a contractor as well as the materials. And it's gonna take quite a bit of time. So that's something you need to plan out in the future. If you've got an old water heater, you can check the warranty and the age of your water heater either right on the label of the unit, or you can go onto the manufacturer's website, put in the serial number, and they'll tell you right then when the warranty expires and when it was manufactured. It's inevitable, but all water heaters are gonna corrode and they're gonna leak. It's just a matter of time. Whether you replace your water heater proactively or reactively, all comes down to how much risk you're willing to live with. It's a personal decision. Some water heater problems are fatal, like leaks, and some are recoverable. And for a few hundred dollars, you can probably get a few more years out of your water heater. We talked about the things to look for if you're in the market for a new water heater. And we also talked about anode rods. These are key to extending the life of your water heater, but I don't recommend you do it yourself. I'd recommend getting a licensed contractor to do this for you, and I wouldn't wait too long after you purchase a new water heater. If you don't change out your anode rod within the first four to five years, it's going to get stuck in there and you'll never get it out. And lastly, we talked about the annual deep flushing. This is probably the best maintenance activity that you can perform as a homeowner to keep your efficiency up. If you like this video, you may like these other videos I've done, specifically about Trilogy Homes. Thanks again. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.